In this episode, I'm going to connect the laser to my Maso CNC controller, configure the software, and give it a test. I've already started by mounting the CNC adapter to my machine. I made a simple mount and attached the CNC adapter to it. This puts it in the ideal position for me, easy to see and reach, but out of the way when I don't need it. And now it's mounted, I can connect it to the laser. I've already run the pre-wired cable between the laser on the Z-axis and the adapter. The cable plugs into the left-hand side of the adapter and the other end plugs into the magnetic docking station. If I didn't have a magnetic docking station and the laser was permanently mounted, the cable would simply plug directly into the laser itself. The power supply plugs directly into the adapter like so, and I can now test if the laser connection is correct. First, turn on the adapter using the key. Press the arm button once and the laser will start. Press and hold the arm button and the laser will fire a one second pulse at full power. So far, everything is plug and play and you really can't go wrong. I now need to connect the adapter to Maso and this requires only two wires. One wire goes to Maso ground and the other to output pin 11 on Maso. Output pin 11 is specially designed to output a PWM signal to drive a laser and is available only on Maso G3 and Maso Touch. Pin 2 of the CNC adapter's control input connector goes to output pin 11 on Maso. Pin 4 of the control input connector goes to Maso ground. This is the minimum configuration needed to get the laser working. We're now ready to turn our attention to Maso and configure it to work with a laser. In the F1 screen, I can now test if my wiring to Maso is correct. I'll assign output 11 as an auxiliary output. I'll use auxiliary 1. I power on the laser and put on my safety glasses. I highlight output 11 and use the spacebar to toggle between high and low. This turns the laser on when the output is high and off when it's low. If this works, I know the laser is wired up correctly. I can now assign output 11 to its final configuration as a laser engraving PWM output. Make sure the invert column says no. In the F1 screen, I need to go to multi-head and select laser engraving and cutting. You'll note that the laser is tool 111, so whenever you want to use this laser, you need to change to tool 111. Just put a tick in the laser enable tick box. Enter 10,000 Hz as the PWM frequency. Let's see if it works. 